I have control. You have control, sir. Before we finish, John, I'll show you a steep bank to starboard. Follow me through. Right, sir. John Andrews is just completing his first flight in a chipmunk. The Ministry of Defence call it an air experience flight, and that's a good name, because it's an opportunity for ATC and CCF cadets to experience a flight, and to experience taking control of an aeroplane, a chance to learn what it's all about. Air Force has been organizing air experience flights since 1958 and every year some 30,000 ATC and CCF cadets have the thrill and excitement of actually flying an aircraft from one of the 13 AEF stations. Before making a flight there are various points that cadets must learn for their own safety and for the safety of the pilot and the aeroplane. When you arrive at the airfield you're likely to be carrying a variety of loose articles like pens, pencils and coins. Under the floor of the chipmunk are several wires and pulleys for the controls of the aeroplane. And if something quite innocent like a ballpoint pen should fall out of a pocket, it could jam the controls. So, before flying, empty your pockets and leave all loose articles behind. A loose article is anything which is not secured to the aeroplane or crew. If you should see anything loose, whether it's yours or not, tell the pilot, even when you're in the air. It's important to wear adequate clothing because the chipmunk doesn't have a heater, so wear something warm, especially in the winter. And don't wear steel-studded boots or shoes like these. They could damage the aeroplane fabric and create dangerous sparks. As a safety precaution, every cadet carries a parachute. If the flight goes over or near the coast, you'll also be required to wear a life jacket, but this will be subject to a separate briefing. There are two sizes of parachute harness in use to accommodate all sizes of cadets. The blue webbing is normally used for small cadets. It's very important to fit the parachute correctly. Place it on a chair, unfold it and sit down on it. On the waistband, you'll find the rip cord or D-ring, which deploys the parachute, and the quick-release box. On the front of the quick-release box is a plate that turns, and when the line on this plate coincides with the line on top of the box, it is in the locked position. First, fit the shoulder straps. Turn the plate as far as it'll go to your right, beyond the dotted lines, insert the buckle, and let go. Repeat this to insert the other shoulder strap buckle. To fit the leg straps, lift up the leg loop, pass the buckle down through the loop and clip it into the release box as before. Repeat with the second leg strap buckle, each time turning the plate to your right. The shoulder and leg straps are adjustable. In a sitting position they should be comfortable but not loose. To tighten the straps, just pull the free end of the webbing. To lengthen a strap, turn the buckle back on itself and pull the strap through. When the parachute is fitted correctly, the straps should be just tight enough to restrain you from standing fully upright. Removing the parachute is very simple. Turn the plate 90 degrees to your left and press it in, but don't bang it in. Return it to the locked position before you leave the parachute. As well as the parachute, protective helmets must be worn. The fabric helmet contains earpieces and a microphone and a plug on a flexible lead to connect to the aircraft's radio system. The microphone has an on-off switch 
which must be kept off except when speaking. The protective helmet, or bone dome, fits over the fabric headset and is secured with a chin strap. Cadet Andrews, come and stand by. Suddenly it's your turn. So with empty pockets and parachute fitted, you make your way to your first flight. But keep your wits about you. The apron is a dangerous place if you're careless. You'll not hear so well with your helmet on, so be aware of what you're doing. As you walk out to your chipmunk, watch out for other aeroplanes that may be taxiing about. Always approach a chipmunk from the tail and never go near the propeller, whether it's turning or not. When you reach the aeroplane, it's perfectly obvious where you can walk and where you can't. There are black rubber walkways and signs where you mustn't walk. The staff cadet will help you get into the cockpit. Once settled, he'll fit the four safety harness straps. Finally, the staff cadet will connect your headset to the aircraft's RT system. When you're strapped in, have a look around, but don't interfere with any of the controls without the authority of the pilot. On the left cockpit wall are the ignition switches. They're covered by a spring-loaded guard and must never be touched. Neither must the fuel cock, which is on the floor just to the left of the control column. John Andrews, sir. Right, John. If you're all set, we'll taxi out. Yes, sir. Tell the pilot if you've flown in a chipmunk before and whether you want him to carry out any particular manoeuvres. Emergencies in a chipmunk are rare, but should one arise, correct drills and procedures must be followed. The first is the forced landing. If the engine fails, it's no real problem because the plane will glide and can be landed in a suitable field. But the pilot doesn't always know the nature of the surface and there may be obstructions like drainage ditches or boggy areas. The emergency drill is designed to ensure that the crew are all right, even if the aeroplane should turn over. First, the pilot will give the order, John, prepare for a forced landing. Be sure to acknowledge the order. Right, sir. Each crew member has an escape hatch in the canopy, and these side panels must be jettisoned before landing. The release handle is positioned beside the left shoulder. When the lever is pulled forward, the side panel can be pushed out. The pilot has his own side panel. Let's see it in practice. The right hand reaches across to the left shoulder. Pull the lever forward and eject the side panel. The pilot will eject his own side panel. Remember, the pilot can't reach your release lever, so you must jettison your own side panel on the instructions of the pilot.
Next, tighten the seat harness very securely so that if the aeroplane stops suddenly, you're not thrown forward against the instrument panel. When the pilot gives the order, brace, 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 brace. which will be just before touchdown, brace, put your brace, arms up sir. on the combing in front of you and cradle your head in them. The pilot will then make the final approach into the field. This may take a little time, so don't be too anxious. And don't start looking around. You must stay in the brace position until the aeroplane has landed. As soon as the aeroplane has come to a halt, release both the seat harness, which is the lower quick release box, and the parachute harness above it, and you're ready to get out. If the canopy is damaged, you get out through the side panel hatch. If it's not damaged, you slide the canopy back. In the roof of the canopy are release handles inside and out. The front handle is for the pilot, and the rear handle is for the passenger. When the handle is operated, it withdraws a latch and you can slide the canopy back on rails. The canopy latch may re-engage when the cockpit is open nine inches and in the halfway position. So operate the lever again and slide the canopy right back. In practice, the pilot will probably pull the canopy halfway back. You pull the release handle again and slide the canopy right back. Then all you have to do is climb out and move well clear of the aeroplane. The second emergency drill is to abandon the aircraft in flight. It's an extreme and rare action to take, but the correct procedure must be learnt. An aircraft will only be abandoned in flight if there is something seriously wrong, like a control malfunction or a fire. But for the purpose of demonstration in this film, the aeroplane is flying straight and level. The first order you get from the pilot is... Check parachute. Again, don't forget to acknowledge the order. Checking parachute now, sir. The check is to make sure that the parachute is still fitted correctly. Next, assist in opening the canopy. In the air, there is a slightly different procedure for opening it. The airflow over it creates lift, which makes it very difficult or impossible to slide along the rails. So a panel is raised on top of the canopy to break the airflow and destroy the lift. Now, operate the canopy release handle as before, and the canopy will slide back quite easily. The top panel is operated by pulling a yellow ball with the right hand. Pull the canopy release handle, and back goes the canopy. Once again, pull the yellow ball with the right hand. With the left hand, pull the canopy release. If necessary, pull the release handle again at the second locking point. The pilot will then give the order, jump, jump. Again, acknowledge the order. Jump, jump, sir. Release the safety harness, stand up in the seat, and grab the left shoulder strap with your right hand, close to the quick release box. Dive over the most convenient side of the aeroplane aiming for the trailing edge of the wing. As we said earlier, emergencies in a chipmunk are very rare, but the correct safety drills must be followed to ensure maximum safety and protection of the crew and the aeroplane. There are one or two further points worth knowing. How are you feeling, John? 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 There is a remote possibility of an intercom failure. First, check that the plug is still connected. If you still can't use the microphone, you can speak directly to the pilot quite strap. easily and ease the earphone ease the back to him. You might feel air sick, especially if you're worried about flying. If you do, 
warn the pilot immediately you feel unwell so that he can get you back on the ground and prevent you being ill. If necessary, you can use a sick bag, which is either tucked under your left harness strap or kept in the left stowage of the cockpit. But you're far better off being ill on the ground. It'll make you more resistant next time. But you haven't come to be ill. You've come to enjoy your flight. Be a part of it. You can help the pilot by keeping a lookout for other aircraft. If you do see another one, describe its position to the pilot using the clock code, if you know it. Don't assume he's seen it just because you have. Excuse me, sir. There's an aircraft at two o'clock low. Contact. It looks like another chipmunk. When you reach the local flying area, you'll be given the opportunity to fly the aeroplane if you wish to. To transfer control of the plane from one person to another, there's a standard procedure that's used worldwide. If the pilot wants you to take control of the aircraft, he'll say, You have control. You will make sure your feet and hands are on the controls, clear of the transmitter button on top, and reply, I have control, sir. Never say it, unless your hands and feet are on the controls. Handle the controls gently. The pilot will help you by telling you what to do and where you're going wrong. If you wish the pilot to take control back from you, say, you have control, sir. And when the pilot wants control back from you, he will say, I have control. When he does, let go of the controls and say, you have control, sir. For some cadets, it'll not be their first chipmunk flight, and they may feel they'd like to experience a few aerobatics. For each new maneuver, the pilot will ask you to follow through. When he says this, put your hands and feet lightly on the controls so that you can feel the movement, but don't try to move the controls yourself. In this way, you can quickly learn the basic control of the aircraft. Finally, don't be afraid to talk to the pilot. Ask him questions. It'll make the flight more interesting for both of you.